Hi everybody, I'm here with Angelo Seminara, our new GoTel brand ambassador. Hi Angelo, it's so great to meet you here. How are you? Very good, very good, very excited. I noticed your fingers, what happened? Don't tell me that you bought a new scissor and start to cutting again. No, I wished because that would have been, I just had a little accident, but you know, nothing we can do is life. Accident happens every day. <laughs> so it's good that you don't have to cut hair on stage right now. Um, I will probably try my best and I'll still cut hair, even if it's injured. You know, I've done it before. You okay. Know. Hairdressing hands sometimes becomes like, uh, you know, tools, if you know what I mean. They have to be able to do everything, like burn stuff, tie stuff, cut stuff, color, everything. So almost like a sculptor, you know. So you can really have some little accidents here and there, but we never have big accidents, you know. Good. Andrew, as, you're, as you are our new brand ambassador, of course I heard a lot about you, but mainly that was about creativity and your passion for hair. But then among all this other stuff, I heard as well about your passion for the environment. Yeah. And me being responsible for sustainability here at Car Salon Division, of course I wanted to learn more about this hidden side of you. So I just would, learn, would like to learn how did you become environmentalist? Um, well, the reason why I'm passionate, I don't think is is really um, uh, how can I say something that just happened. You know, it's probably my upbringing that the fact that you know uh, I come from a southern Italian family. Uh, I was born in a small village, mm -hmm. you know, um, by the sea, not too far off from the sea, and I had a grandmother that was really uh, probably. To these days, I don't know anybody that was more sustainable than her. Wow. And the reason uh, why people were more sustainable and they could afford uh, the sustainability, it was for the pure reason that they're all working as a family, which to be honest, it was a little bit cruel in a way because I think a child uh, should not go and work at the age of five. but. That was what made them really be, you know, um, you know, sustainable, because they could sustain also financially, not paying other people, so rather than just having it all in the family. So my grandmother never bought a, a tomato from a shop or a bottle of wine, not even soap, not even she used to make her own Italian salami. I don't know if you know this uh, yeah. uh, hams. She used to make everything, milk. She had absolutely everything bread so i come from that and she was absolutely against uh pesticide you know and all the bad stuff that goes into the plants you know into organics and, and as you inherited that from your grandmother yeah. what took you away from it now you're living in london you're not living anymore in italy and you are not doing your your own olives or making your own butter so how does it work out in, in london being an env environmentalist I think it's hard and obviously it becomes uh, very expensive when, you talk, when we talk about uh, especially uh, f food ingredients and all of that stuff. But at the same time, it's possible, you know, you can, you, you know, you can adapt to turn the light off, you know, in the evening and maybe switch off certain things, don't waste energy, don't waste so water. So it's always the little things. Yeah, I remember my, my mom always said, oh, turn the lights off in that room, why they're on, you know, you're just wasting energy. It was a thing that they had, you know, coming from that background. And uh, the same thing with the water, you know, like they, they, they wouldn't waste water. Uh, actually, I remember my grandmother used to go and wash her clothes, all her bed sheets and everything, in the natural, uh, we call it sorgiva of water. Yeah, okay. Where it's the cleanest and be most beautiful water. She used to do that too. So it was quite interesting. And how? Do you transfer that into your profession, into your job? What does being, what does it mean being an environmentalist for you as a hairdresser? Well, I think you know I'm not any better than anyone else of my colleagues. I'm exactly like them. But what I do have always that thing stuck in in the head here. Hey, we did just did a hair show. Can we recycle these pins, for example? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, or that hair dryer, where it's on, you know, you're wasting energy. Or, for example, can we re recycle these uh, hair extensions? You know, can we just try and use maybe some type of glue that is not so bad? Or, you know, things like this, I think.
as you say, a hair extension. Did you know that you can use hair as well to soak oil, to extract the oil from water? So it's used in, 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 in climate, in oil catastrophes already. Absolutely, yeah, I know. Uh, there is an American brand that is using it as a filter for the CO2. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know. So hair is a great material and you can do good things about it and bad things. Um, sustainability, I know when we talked before that you're really passionate about packaging, sustainable packaging and plastics. What, what do you mean with that? I don't personally, I'm, I'm not a big lover of second packaging, especially like, you know, if you already have, I'm, I'm not in love with anything that you just open it and throw it, you know, and it just attracts you in the, in, in for a second, but it's a false attraction because it's like a person, you know, you, you have to like me for what I'm inside, not what I'm outside of myself. Not because so of your cut. Yeah, not because of the way I look, <laughs> you know, you have to like for, for how I am as a person yeah. and I always, uh, I, I always try and not judge things, you know, I, I don't judge uh, nobody or nothing. I, I can look at uh, something and I'm like, hmm, I become very inquisitive and I, I become mm -hmm. very interested automatically in uh, trying to find, you know, find out about that subject. So wouldn't be nice with the products if it was the same, you know, that you just, uh, you get something for what it is, you know, rather than or it could be, but then it's not, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So for you, such a card box is more an impression? Yeah, yeah. I think, to be fair, uh, most of the brands around the world, they all, not all, but a lot of them are really trying. And I think we probably very soon, we're going to be pushed on the wall and say, hey, you got five years, this is the rules, that's it. You know, we need to adapt and, and use absolutely sustainable materials. Uh, to use uh, environmentally friendly stuff and also work on the human resources and treat people, you know, the way, you know, they should be. For us at Cow, when we have to decide if we want to reduce packaging, so reduce plastic, for example, or if we want to reuse packaging, so by using uh, consumer recycled plastic, for example, for us the first priority is always to reduce because what you have not been, what hasn't been used in the packaging, cannot harm the environment. What do you think about that priority? I mean, I have to say something about you, <laughs> about <laughs> yeah, please. Goldwell and the, the cow, you know, in general, cow salons. Uh, I, I, I just think that you could be a bit more talking about sustainability, and you don't, because. I mean, talking to you about the fact that y you represent, for me, real someone that is, talks about sustainability the way you are as a person, but also from what you, you showed me and what you told me, I was absolutely surprised how actually Cow is already doing so many things and no one knows. So I if, I, if I have to put you into a box somewhere, you know, as a brand, I would probably say that you are like, uh, you know, the Beatles, uh, I don't know if you remember George Harrison. Yeah, was, of course. They, they used to call him the Quiet Beatles. The Quiet Beatles, okay. So that's my line for Goldwell. You're the quiet company, you know. That. So you want us to transform from, from George Harrison to Paul McCartney? No, stay like George <laughs> Harrison, <laughs> but, you know, maybe something in between. Okay. I, I don't I think see. talking about sustainability too much, it becomes a cliche these days. And yeah. as you know, a kid in the school, when he, you know, when he goes to school, the first thing that they're teaching today is that. I think. So I'm sure the young generation is well prepared and they will keep the environment beautiful and clean and safe, you know. So I think this is something that, you know, is, you know, the reality of tomorrow. I see. So what I get from you is your advice. We should talk a little bit more about what we do. Because this is, I guess, this is partly the German heritage and partly as well the Japanese heritage of cow. We are modest. We always want to do the right things, but obviously we are not talking about it enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, for, for me, Japan, I don't know, maybe I have some Japanese roots somewhere. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't look, that I could be from Japan, I could look from somewhere else. But I love uh, the way they are sustainable. and. I think as a cow, you, you have that, but I think it would be good to share it just for people to know and, or, you know, like you share all your ingredients, what you use and, you know, I, th I think it wouldn't 
how many one you mm. know in the future okay so i would love to obviously collaborate in that and you know share our passion for sustainability you know at the same time good great i think we i can think we can we can continue in that way and and using your passion as well on our journey towards sustainability i also want to say that you know i'm i'm not this person that is sitting here saying they super sustainable because i drive the car i came here you know uh, by plane and uh, i do all the things to everyone else but it's always in the back of my mind and I always try, you know, and also educate my kids at home. For example, they have their own bottles for the water. They, mm -hmm. We don't buy plastic, we filter it and it lasts forever. No, I mean, small things like this. And I know some, some countries like in Scandinavia, especially, and uh, maybe in Japan and other parts of the world, they've been doing this for years already. And uh, their economy has been also not too bad for this. So it's good for the whole economical situation too I think recycling because it's saving you know absolutely I mean very often it's the little things and as you are educating your kids as you say I mean we have on our journey towards becoming more sustainable in in the future years we want to take our salon partners along with us and very often people like you who run a salon they want to become more sustainable but then they don't know where to start and they don't know what is important so what would be your advice do you have some tips for some for some uh, stylists who want to start their own journey with a salon what should they do i mean there's so many little things that you can do in the salon to help uh, not just the environment but also the economics of the salon and uh, you know just the environment in general I think, you know, uh, if you think about, for example, I don't remember, I hardly remember actually, blow drying hair in the salon. And the reason why, because I would spend my full time on a haircut, really trying to be very disciplined and giving a very clean, sharp haircut. It doesn't need blow dry. So already, already if you show your stylist that, not only are they going to give a beautiful haircut that the client is and you are proud of wearing and doing it, but also you're going to feel like, you know, uh, you're saving a lot of energy. Yeah, I mean, energy is really important. It's the same with the energy which comes with warm water. Do you know, we have, we have done a calculation about the carbon footprint of a shampoo. From the procurement of the raw materials, about then the production, the transport to the salons, the usage, and then when it's getting binned, so to say. And 80% of the carbon emission, 80% of the carbon footprint comes from washing your hair with warm water under the shower. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 yeah, it's the energy. Yeah, absolutely. But also I'm talking about, you know, if you have a... Uh, you know, um, a meter for the heating in the in the salon. You know where you can yeah. see the, your temperature. Just turn the con the the air conditioning off. You know you don't need it sometimes. You know I know that in salons it gets very warm, but I rather open the window sometimes. You know and have that natural fresh air coming in the salon if it's possible. You know obviously, and I think that fresh air in this day and age is actually better than you know being shut and having you know, especially in this unprecedented time with coronavirus. I think that's pretty good. For me, my dream has always been to make a salon that you push a button and it has holes everywhere and it just airs up in three seconds. Okay, because that's a I, yeah. yeah, I find, I find salons, they can get very stuffy, you know, like with like hair dry, all the different perfumation of the products, you know, and all of that. And uh, I want to design something in the future that gives a much more beautiful, you know, feel for that. Very often it's the little things that I pre really appreciate what, what you are saying. And I guess at a salon, it's equally important if you change things. So, for example, if you lower the, the water temperature by one degree, then you have to talk to your clients that you are on a journey because people are really accepting today a lot if they know why you're doing it. So it, it's a journey. It's a journey for Salon. And it's a journey for us. And um, do you remember that last year at Global Zoom on stage, we were standing on stage, John Moroni and I, and we were giving our stylist a promise, our Salon partners, that in the coming years we would we would systematically, step by step, reduce the environmental footprint of our products and services at the salon. But more importantly, that we want to live 
sustainability as part of our partnership concept. And this is a, uh, an important journey and uh, that's why I'm, I feel it so, so great that you have this mindset as well as, a, as an ambassador. I mean, you know, even like just washing your brushes, don't wash it one at a time. Put all your brushes in one little bucket with the water and they detach and then you just rinse it quick. Or for example, uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I could give you examples that never ends, you know. I'd, I'd rather almost have like a little uh, kind of washing machine to wash all the bowls for ah, the colour okay, yeah. and all the brushes than individually one because the, the amount of water we waste, especially in all salons around the world, all together is, is, uh, is phenomenal, you know. And water is the problem of the future because Absolutely. last night I was in this place and I just asked for a bottle of water and it was 10 euros. And I was like, what? what's liquid this? Liquid gold. Yeah, it's like liquid gold. So we better start looking after it. Yeah, I see. I think we, we could continue our talk for hours. You have so many ideas that you can bring along. Um, but as we, ha as we have to end our conversation, I would love to follow up on, on that one at a later point in time. But uh, especially what I would love is to take your passion, your passion for the environment and of course your passion for gold well. Yeah to help us on our journey to make the world a little bit better and to take our salon partners along on their journey. So, but I'm sure with your passion that will, you will be a great support on, on this Absolutely. journey for us. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much Thank for you your time, for Angelo. Thank you.